Okay, this video here is just going to give some very basics on how to use ORCAD Capture. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. So this is, of course, ORCAD um, Capture CIS, and this is just the main opening screen here. So if you have recent files, they'll show them here. Obviously, I've got some recent files going on here. Um, but we're going to want to create a new project here to show you how just to do some basics here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on New Project. and I'm going to go ahead and give it a name, and I'm just going to call this example one. And we have P spice. We can do analog or mixed A and D. Um, that's the option we're going to want. And of course, you can change the location by just hitting the browse button and then navigating through there. Um, just as a side note, um, I would recommend that you not save anything on the lab computers on the C drive because it won't have it if you log into a different computer. Plus if the computers ever get updated you'll lose that information completely so my recommendation would always be to have a USB drive um, to uh, save the files on and just don't forget to always take your USB drive with you I always find some in the lab alright so let's get started here so I click OK now I already have that file it's existing because I was doing this another time I'm just going to replace it if you don't have that file already it's not going to come up with this warning um, and so let's say OK. All right, so now we've got our little thing here. Now, yours might come up with a blank screen um, as far as with the circuit diagram, but what I want to show you here right now is we've got this example one here, and this is actually kind of where all of your resources are. So you've got design, and then you've got example one.dsn, and then you've got schematic, and then page one that is where we're going to be building the circuit. Now you can have multiple pages in your schematic or you can even have multiple schematics and when you simulate it will simulate them all at once. But we're going to do just a very simple one. So I'm going to double click on this and it will open page one. Now yours might have already had this opened which is fine but if it didn't it's fine as well. So we have some like grid paper here. If you use the control button and the scroll key you can zoom in and out um, which can be helpful when you're uh, drawing your circuit. Alright, so the next thing we need to do here is of course get the circuit diagram and that just requires us to place components down. So if we look over here on this little sidebar here there's a little thing here that says place part and it's even got a little P there to let us know that that's what we need to do. Um, you can also go through it here by place part um, but once you get used to it, you'll do what I do often, which is just use the keyboard shortcuts, which is P. Now it's going to open this little part thing. If you find that too big, um, you might be able to shrink it down a little bit. I'm not going to be able to. Um, if you have a better screen resolution than what this is right now, um, it's not a problem having the place part open at the same time as all the other things here. So now you'll notice here that there's two, several things here. I've got a part name here, and I've got a part list. And then I've got libraries. And if you notice, all of the libraries are highlighted right now. So it's basically looking at all of these libraries that I have installed, and it's looking at them. Now, if I were to select just one, for instance, if I select analog, it's going to change all of the parts here. So, and if I go C, you can even see, oh, look, that's a capacitor, E. Um, well, it's kind of a, a dependent source is a way you can use that. Um, F is another kind of dependent, it's a current source, but then if we go down we can also see L, R, some of the standard ones. So those are under the analog. Now you might not have some of these libraries installed and that's fine, but let's say for instance you don't have the analog library installed. What do you do? So I'm going to delete it right now. Crap, I don't have the library to do resistors and capacitors. Not a big deal. All you do is you click on add a library. I don't know why mine always opens up so big like this uh, instead of just a simple window. Um, but it's going to bring you into the pSpice directory here. And all of these files are different libraries and they contain lots of different component parts. And so you can select one and then you just say open and that would install the library into um, Capture. So we need to put back the one I deleted which is analog. So just find analog, hit open. Now, the libraries you need for this video are the analog library, the CapSim library, and the source library. Those are the libraries that you need installed um, on this one. So, 
This first example that we're going to look at is just a very basic resistor circuit here. So we're going to just build a circuit that has several different resistors in it um, and wire it up and then simulate it. So let's first go to the analog library and then let us go into R. Now another thing I can maybe point out here is if you have really big long libraries that you don't want to have to scroll through but you know the name of the part R, you can just start typing it in up there. So I'm going to double click on that and then you can see it comes up over here for me to place a resistor. Now I'm going to place them, but before I do that there's a nice key you can use here. If you use R, it is, stands for rotate, and so you can actually rotate the resistor before you place it. So I'm going to go ahead and place resistor 1, and then let's see here. I'm going to just place another one right there, and then I'll put maybe one here and one here. Okay. So we're going to do four resistors. Then to stop placing resistors, you hit the escape key. So that gets rid of whatever you're currently doing. Now you can um, hold the left mouse button in and select the resistors, move them around. You know, it's going to snap to this grid that we have here. Um, and again, just click somewhere else to get rid of it. And it automatically labels the resistors for us. And by default, it sets them all at one kilo ohm. So We'll change that in a second. Well, actually, let's just go ahead and change it now. Let's go ahead and leave R1 at 1 kilo ohm, and then let's change R2 to 2.2 kilo ohms. So I'll do 2.2K, and then let's change this to 560 ohms, so 560, and then double click on this one and change that to 3.3 kilo ohms. All right. I'm just doing some random ones here. Obviously, if you have a circuit diagram, you're just building the circuit diagram. Now the next thing we're going to need um, for this first example is a source. So I'll go to the source library and I could scroll all the way down but I know I want to use a DC source. Notice as I start typing in V that's a voltage source. It already takes me to the AC so I'm going to do V DC and the symbol here isn't um, the one that we've often used. What they use is a battery symbol here to represent DC. So double click on that and then I'm going to place my DC source there. So let's just go ahead and set that to, let's just assume it's 9 volts. Now you can just actually type 9, you don't have to do 9 VDC, so you can just have that be 9. Now the other thing before we start connecting the circuit up that you always need to have in a circuit is ground. Uh, the circuit will not simulate properly without a ground. So I'm going to go ahead and hit G here for ground and then it comes up with a bunch of different options. Um, it's easy just to use the default one here, the zero cap sim, so just go ahead and do OK. And then we'll just place a ground. And then again hit escape for being done placing. Now you'll notice that at times when we get more complicated circuits we might put in more than one ground. And the only reason we're going to do that is so that we don't have to have wires going all over. They're all the same ground, it's all zero. All right. So now we're ready to start connecting things up here. And you can see there's lots of little different connectors here, but the one we want to look at is this one here, which is place wire. So I just have, um, I can click on it, or I can just do W for place wire. And before I do that, let me go ahead and, since I'm done placing parts, I'm going to close this part menu out there. So we can place wires. Now I know I'm still placing, because I've got this little um, plus symbol here. And you basically just go to where you want one of those boxes where you want to start and then I'm going to connect it up here and it'll have a nice little red dot saying hey you're making a connection there and so I've done I've made a connection and I'm going to just continue left clicking to make these connections now this next one see it notice it has this, a dot that means it's going to connect to the wire there but if I do like this let me just show you here I'm going to hit escape now um, this wire is actually laying on top of it. There is no connection between these two wires. And you can see because I can click on them individually like that. So what you want to make sure when you do this, I'm going to place a wire back again. Whoops. And there's that red dot and then you click. And then if I start connecting a wire somewhere else, you'll see that there is a nice pink dot there. So that pink dot, if that's not there, those wires aren't actually connected together. 
All right, so let's finish connecting up the rest of the circuit. And you can also hit the left mouse button if you want to, for instance, I like my wire to stay down here, and then we want it to go back up. So, and then finally here. So we've got our nice little circuit built here. So pretty straightforward. You hit escape again to get out of placing wires. Now we're ready to simulate the circuit. Now in order to simulate the circuit, you have to first build a simulation profile. So you want to click up here on new simulation profile. And I'll just go ahead and call this DC analysis, because that's what we're doing right now. So we're just doing a DC analysis. So we're going to do create. And this is going to take a second um, to pop up. And you have to, it has to check for a license. Um, and I want to just show you here, um, it, it might take quite a while for it to pop up for you. If it doesn't show this screen up, what's going to happen is you're going to see something at the bottom here come up eventually. This little window here is going to come up. It could take a minute or two, believe it or not. And that's because it's actually having to go get a license, check out a license. For now, we don't need to change anything in here. That will be when we get into some more advanced simulations. So you just go ahead and click OK. So we've created a simulation profile. Now, um, notice here that this little green arrow is now able to be pressed. And that's basically, OK, we've created a simulation profile. Let's run the simulation. So we just go ahead and click on it. And again, you have to be patient here. Um, and if you're on the computers in the lab, this could take several minutes, because again, it's got to check out a license. And eventually, you'll see, and it has popped up right here, there's this little window here that's popped up. And I'm actually going to bring it in here, because it was in my other window here. I had two monitors going. And so you can see this, and it looks like there's nothing here. This is your output. We will be using this when we start doing some more AC analysis and looking at some more advanced circuits. So right now, there's nothing here. But you don't want to close this. If you close this and then rerun the simulation, it's going to recheck out the license. So once this opens once, you want to kind of leave this open. You can rerun the simulation, but you want to leave that open until you're basically done with the program. All right. So. The whole point of this first um, example is just to be able to see voltages and currents through it. So we can just see here, enable bias voltage display. So what this is doing is it's telling me what are the voltages at the nodes. So at this node right here, there is 9 volts. Shouldn't be surprising to us. We don't have to do a lot of circuit analysis to realize that I have a 9 volt power supply here and then it's ground down here. Notice ground is still labeled at 0 volts. Then this node right here is 3.033 volts. And then this node is at 1.820 volts. Now, you can actually move some of these things around if it's getting too um, jumbled up. But you can see it's always going to have a nice little dotted line so that you can see where that voltage is actually occurring. Now, um, if we are talking about what the voltage across R1 is, it's not 9 volts and it's not 3 volts it would be 9 minus this 3.033. So if I was in the lab measuring the voltage across this resistor, the voltage across this resistor would be 9 minus 3.033, which is roughly 6 volts. So if you were building the circuit in the lab, you should be re measuring roughly 6 volts. Similarly, what you can do is you can turn on I, which that's going to give you the current through the components. And we can, again, you can move these around. But it's actually a red one because it's telling you this is the current going through the resistor R1. And then these currents are the currents going through the respected resistors as well. Now the nice thing is, OK, we got our simulation done here. But let's say, oh, wait, um, this isn't supposed to be 2.2K. This was supposed to be um, a 1.2K ohm resistor. Well, you just change it to 1.2. Nothing's changed. We still have to rerun the simulation. But all I do is I hit Run Spice again. And it will bring this window back up. Minimize that. But notice that all the values have now changed. You know, now the current is 6 milliamps. This voltage here is now 2.992 volts. Um, so the values have updated. And so 
this is basically wraps us up with this first little example of how to do a basic simulation in ORCAD.